one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Distant shores and the islands will see your love as it rises. Just that part. Distant shores and the islands will see your love as it rises from me. Distant shores. Sing it as a prophecy tonight. Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Sing. Distant shores and the islands will sing your life. As it rises upon me, just the voices. Distant shores and the islands. It's not a song, it's a prophecy. As it rises upon me. Distant shores. Their kings will come with their treasures. Their nobles will come in awe of God's hand upon your life. As it rises on Distant shores. They will come from the north. They will come from the south. They will come from the east. They will come from the west. I tell you, as it rises and distant shores. Your life. Two more times from the depth of your spirit. And the island to see. One more time. Decent shows. Your life. Turn it into a prayer. Kings are coming, nobles are coming. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your voice and prophesy upon yourself. Kalaba shabara tabala kabaya, mande bratas kalabarias kabarende go shabala dabai. My life is an all to kings and nobles. They come with their treasures. They come to acknowledge the hand of God upon my life. Pray, sabara Barakato Sabra Digala Baratos Sibarata Kamarana Bananaba Sibereko to Sobre de Gedebenebos Sababa Katarabana Bananaba 
regardless of my background, regardless whatever is not working or working in my life, I know that I'm rising. Gentiles must come to my light, the kings to the brightness of my rising. There is this treasure in every vessel. There is this treasure. Eastern shores and the islands will see your light. Eastern shores. Eastern shores. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live to praise your name. are standing on the mystery. I live to praise your name. There's no fear again. I Celebrate my king in this place. Hey, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. He's the pandemic God. The pandemic God.
thanks for your life, what he's made out of your life so far. From the depth of your heart, acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Lord, I acknowledge you, the doer of all good things, the giver of every dimension of wisdom. giver of all good things. The giver of all good things. The giver of all good things. Hallelujah. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. To acknowledge him means to recognize that he's the reason why you are what you are, where you are. Don't ever be careless about this. In all your ways. Lord, if anybody sees any wisdom in my life, it's because of you. I wish I could sing the song. I'm acknowledging you for for what you've done in my life. I'm acknowledging you for who you are. Dance like you are, dance like you are. I'm acknowledging you for who you are, for what you've done in my life. I'm acknowledging you for who you are. Dance like you are, dance like you are, Baba, Baba, oh, Baba, Baba, oh, 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 Baba, oh. in my soul Jehovah be lifted in my life today even in my heart even in my soul Jehovah be lifted in my life today Baba oh Baba Baba oh Baba oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, as a family, we say thank you. There is not one of us who has what it takes to produce results. If there is anything in our lives, if there is anything in this ministry that is worthy of commendation, we declare that it is because of you. We are not ashamed to declare your faithfulness. You are our helper, Ebenezer, the Lord who has helped us. For you are holy, righteous and worthy, my God, I lift you high, be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, I lift you high.
Something mighty in your life. God is building something powerful in your life. God is making mighty men in this place. And He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like Him. He won't stop. No, He won't stop till your life looks like him let me prophesy to you again god is raising mighty warriors in this place god is raising men of honor in this place he is raising men of influence in this place my God is raising men of power in this place. You may cry, but he won't stop till your life looks like him. You may weep, but he won't stop till your life looks like him. When it's over, when it's over, when it's over, when it's over, suddenly you look like him suddenly you talk like him suddenly you walk like him suddenly you heal like him he's raising me in this place he's raising your finances in this place he's raising your anointing in this place he won't stop he won't stop to we look just like him he won't stop never stop to we look just like you never stop never stop to we look just like he's raising men of fire in this place raising men of vision in this place he's raising men of wisdom in this place he's showing his mysteries in this place and he won't stop no he won't stop he looks like him he won't stop he won't stop to your life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop to his bride looks like him he won't stop he won't stop listen he won't stop he won't stop to your life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him listen let me start tonight with a word of encouragement to someone i don't care how your life is you are a project that god is working on line upon line precept upon precept sometimes you may cry as the word comes sometimes you may wish the training stops but he won't stop please don't stop till your church looks like you never stop please don't stop till your bride looks like you never stop never stop till our lives look like you never stop never stop till our lives look like so hold on yeah, my encouragement hold on god is working oh, oh yeah. you may be discouraged hold on you may weep so when he's over 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 suddenly you look like him suddenly you talk like him 
Suddenly you appear Suddenly you realize him For the sun will no more Give you sunlight by day The moon will no more give you When he's done with you Jehovah will be your everlasting light He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight For the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright When Yahweh binds up the wounds in your life When he heals all the bruises inflicted by this world Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy listen to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed i reckon that for now there are things that don't look like it yet you are praying but you've not seen the answer you are fasting but there's nothing in your life you have a church and your church looks like a shop because nothing is happening he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him take this as a prophecy tonight till your life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till your life looks like him please don't stop never stop till my life looks like you please don't stop no don't stop till my life lord i may cry but please don't stop till my life looks like you i may be tired but please don't stop till my life he won't stop till our lives look like you he'll never stop till our lives look like him never stop till my life looks like you hallelujah lord we believe in you we believe in you we trust where you are taking us and we ask that you will take us there in the name of jesus christ lord let our tears not stop you let our fatigue not stop you let our human weariness not stop you let not even our unbelief stop you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'd like you to walk up to 10 people just prophesy to them tell them you are a wonder on your way to happen go ahead Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. We will all be very great in this life. But the best part of it is that we will all know ourselves. Hallelujah. You see, every leader, please listen. Every leader, whether in church setting, has an assignment. Praise the Lord. Human beings are like, please pay attention, human beings are like computers. Now, that's not an insult. I just want to explain something to you. 
human beings are like gadgets only a leader knows what they will become because god revealed it to him are we together the people have an idea of what they are to become but they don't have it clearly and they don't know how to get there every true leader is a leader only because he has seen the end are we together now the job of the leader is to be able to lead the people their job is to trust him enough and follow him so the first assignment of everybody who wants to follow a leader is to probe the life of that leader until you think he's worthy of your loyalty and trust because it's risky to follow a leader who doesn't know where he's going he will take you anywhere dump you there are we together so the bible says without vision the people perish the word perish there is they miss their direction they cast off restraint listen brothers and sisters let me announce to you that god is taking you somewhere are we together i want you to trust please listen listen trust trust the teachings that you are receiving don't just agree with them mentally trust it it says trust in the lord right believe in the lord and you shall be established he said believe in his prophets not just no believe that the person god has placed in your life by grace has an idea on how to take you to where you need to go and you receive the truth you see the problem with many of us is we are not receptive to the word we listen to it and compare it with what we know and if they tally we believe it if it does not tally we dump it away there are so many people you see let me tell you something i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday anywhere you see consistent result there is understanding producing it are we together now please i need your attention anywhere you see consistent results there is understanding it's not guesswork it's not magic it's not some charm there is an intentional operation please mama and come let me use him you're looking beautifully dressed with your tie oh this is lovely don't you think so this is beautiful you can dress like this on your wedding day and i'm telling you you are there you are perfect this is this is it praise the lord sam please come let me use these guys i mean these are my people today are looking superb learn to celebrate good things <laughs> hallelujah poor people and mediocre fight and resent good things you know that spirit is dead here permanently it was buried by me personally learn to celebrate nice things now my man you knotted this tie right yes sir can you do it again yes sir sam can you knot your tie again yes sir were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties but the ties are knotted because there is a principle that has nothing to do with the person it is a law there is a way you turn this rope you later call tie and it looks beautiful like this so he was doing it in his house or in his room sam was doing it in his own house they had the same result no witch stopped it no demon stopped it are we together they can do it every week because it is built on principles this is how i want your life to run such that you may be in Aquaibom, you may be in zamfara it makes no difference as far as you see the laws of god has equal value everywhere it's not like naira and dollar it's not like petrol it's not like all of these things it has equal value everywhere he told cain if you do what is right will your sacrifice not be accepted 
i don't reject it because your name is cain you are violating something listen your journey every man of god every man of god when you get people born again by the spirit and open them up to the ministry of the holy spirit the next thing the very next thing is to begin to guide them change their mindsets pray for one minute prophesy lord i understand what is happening to me hallelujah hallelujah god bless you please sit down these two guys and another example this guy is called a christian brother a this is christian brother b are we together both of them came to jesus christ genuinely confessed his lordship he lives in their hearts he lives in their hearts but the quality of their lives are we together and the possibilities that can be produced from their lives become different because this brother got born again and he was planted in a church where the man of god though well-meaning is just guessing around whatever he feels like teaching i was telling the school of ministry students today he feels like teaching on rapture next week he teaches on relationship the next week he teaches on certain kinds of mysteries have hazard informations whereas this brother had the opportunity to be planted under a very visionary pastor who understands where he is taking him are we together at the end of two years you bring them together and this guy is well-meaning jesus is still lord over his life but there is no victory in any area of his life there is no operation of the spirit at work in him he's familiar with a lot of christian terminologies but there is complete barrenness in his life whereas this other brother has moved forward because informations move people forward something he did not know he's now receiving let me just give us a background before i go into the teaching of tonight listen school of ministry students just allow me to take a little of your lectures and just bring to the house i want you to know this especially if you're a man of god members only receive about 20 percent of the information that is communicated to them are you following me now the smartest member in any congregation cannot at the first instance of any teaching assimilate more than 20 percent of what is really taught so while you hear people say mm, preach preacher are we together and while we as men of god keep fooling ourselves thinking we are impressing people with mysteries we coin scriptures and greek and hebrew words and at the end of it the people are dazzled they get up and they shake and we think we are moving forward let me assure you the lifespan of that noise is not more than one week they will hear something else that's why you pastors teach members how to reign in certain dimensions but when they stand in real life situations they make foolish decisions do you know why because something here did not take one sermon to be wrong it took their entire growing up process a mindset a thinking so don't you think you will come with just one sermon renew your mind and people say in the name of jesus i'm tired of this mind to mean that they are free oh no no the word of god must be taught systematically there are three dimensions of assimilation i was teaching the school of ministry students the first level is awareness any information you hear trust me the first encounter with it is only awareness you really have not understood it although you will argue let me tell you what awareness is all about awareness is like um information stored in a system but random are we together so the information is in you but it's random it's scattered 
it cannot be filed and produced when it is appropriate that is the reason why many students read they read two days to the exam they go to the exam hall and they remember this formula is in my head but whether it's five is five up or down i cannot exactly understand because you see the mind is like a machine are you getting what i'm saying now because you were only aware of the information later on you will remember but you do not have the power to remember it when you want because it's still at the level of awareness so you are learning tithing you are learning on the anointing you are learning on the ministry of the holy spirit you think you have gotten it but it's still in the realm of awareness the second level is called understanding where the logic and the principle behind that operation now enters into your spirit so you are no longer just aware of the information you understand it it says in all thy getting get understanding are we together now there are things in my life i thought i had gotten i would have argued but in recent times i'm looking at them and i'm surprised i'm like my goodness so what did i think i got that's why you must be very meek in the presence of god is god speaking to us understanding the third level and that's where god is taking us is mastery everybody say mastery the third level is mastery at that point the, the revelations have become a stronghold in your mind you cannot undo it again it has become part of your convictions that's the realm of settled faith you are not jacking yourself into believing that reality he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded persuaded You may be like this brother or this person in this place tonight this gentleman comes to church with his philosophies let's go to church i'm a christian let me go and hear what god has to say and when the message is going on he looks at people writing and he feels guilty and he says bros you have two virus he collects it because he does not even understand why people write it is not a revelation to him he's just embarrassed that in a whole row he's the only one not writing and he says let me write what did they even say ecclesiastes he just put dash 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 he's not he's not even conscious of the information he's writing whereas someone is sitting like a sponge waiting for every truth and he's writing are we together now this is this brother like many of us we come to god with our stumbling blocks our mindsets our ideologies so many pastors so many people business leaders many all kinds of ideas and then as though we came to watch a cinema let's hear what god has to say and then when one looks impressive he said guy that's smart the other one said eh, do i exactly agree no only a fool argues with the word of god the word of god is supposed to be like a hammer in your life when it comes let it crush everything that does not have stamina in your life and give way refuse to have loyalty to wrong ideologies don't hold on to them because of the solidarity of how long they have been in your life that that's the information you've known all your life does not mean you are right are we together be like the other brother your heart receptive oh i'm a man of god but i know there is more i'm a businessman but i know there is more i'm a leader but i know there is more i've seen the anointing of god in my life but i know there is more i have seen myself operating the prophetic but i know this this cannot be it this can't be it god is so much bigger than this is calling us deeper 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 is calling us deeper 
Hallelujah. Any church, any pastor, any man of God that is not committed to teaching his members the principles, not stories. Are we together? Not opinions. The principle. You change men by changing their convictions. You change men by altering their convictions you change men by altering their convictions a man cannot change if his convictions doesn't change a man cannot change if his thinking is still the same so the word of god comes to you and begins to propose a new life you have lived this life but i show you a more excellent way it's up to you to believe god enough or argue it let me tell you something i have watched and and sometimes we discuss it especially in recent times with Ejimi. i have watched with shock how very ignorant people ignorant pastors ignorant leaders ignorant businessmen argue with those who have results to me i define that as the highest level of pride i will never argue with a man who has results when i stand before people whose lives i greatly admire my heart at once i take up all that title apostle so, so, so and so and i sit down when i see a man communicating a dimension of reality i have not seen in my life i dare not argue i listen and i listen sincerely it doesn't mean i receive everything but i listen i listen without any sense of cynicism i lay my golden crowns thank god for the little i know but i want to know more and i must be meek because the lesser is blessed of the greater colleagues don't bless themselves they advise themselves are we together that that foolish thinking that is eating the body of christ that makes everybody come and then you say oh let me listen oh sam this is i'm impressed you see an ignorant man listen to a pastor who spends two hours teaching something that can change his life and at the end he comes to the person and says wow very nice the ignorant man will not say my goodness you changed my life can i have your tapes can i establish any strategic alliance with you Everybody say, I'm becoming wise. Say it, I'm becoming wise. Give me anybody, and I say this with all due respect. Give me anybody, any two people. Any two people at all. All I need from any of them is a teachable heart. A truly teachable heart. Bring this guy from London with the little knowledge he knows this guy from my village somewhere are we together bring two of them to me let this guy have a teachable heart genuinely teachable let this guy have an arrogant heart give me six months believe me when i tell you six months of thorough mentorship six months with, with a heart that is malleable I will produce a wonder you compare them after six months their difference is like light and darkness that's what is happening to some of us but the problem is some of us are not paying attention we are not seeing what God is doing never come to the presence of God just to worship to fall down to stand up and to leave there is a measure of transformation happening to you line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little then your life is changing changing your thinking is changing all of a sudden you were somebody who would not even comb your hair but you are a prayer warrior are we together you've never seen the relevance of a comb 
something about the spirit of excellence touches you and you say if i add a good prayer life to character and comb my hair well is that not an added advantage are we together all of a sudden you find out that you are a prayer warrior but you are poor and broke and every door finance is closed and then the word of god is coming at first let me tell you how you react because most likely the people who taught you how to pray may not teach you to pay attention to finances so it doesn't matter let me just be serious with god god will reward me for my prayer but as the word of god comes you will find out that one truth in the kingdom does not replace the other you can excel in one dimension and still fail in another he made many lights but he made two great lights there's not just one light the kingdom of god is made up of systems your understanding of the operation in any system will deliver the results for you so that you are living in divine health does not guarantee prosperity that you are rich does not guarantee a healthy spiritual life are we together now yeah so the word of god keeps balancing you you now begin to understand the systems of god say the systems of god please say it again the systems of god yes there are different departments of spiritual operation there is the economy of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together there is the governmental system of the kingdom right there are systems in the kingdom there are operations that are responsible for the delivery of the anointing dramatic proportions of grace upon the life of a man there are possibilities of god that can activate your finances you can master god's economy there is another dimension that can make you excel when you understand god's concept and idea of relationships then you will be a successful person spiritually then you will be a millionaire multi-millionaire are we together then you will be an award-winning husband or wife with the ability to train children then you will be kingdom driven and not carried away by those things that is a complete man that is a picture of the true bride of christ anything short of this order is like taking the four legs of a table and you stand on just one how long can you stand you were designed to stand on two hallelujah pray a prayer point right now quickly and say lord expose to me my areas of ignorance i am willing to receive pray thank you, thank you guys thank you please pray expose oh god unto me the areas of ignorance in my life i'm not too arrogant to receive your word i'm not too proud i'm a great businessman i'm a great man of god but lord i tremble at your word i'm not part of those who argue with your word my heart is open because the word of god has the ability of influencing my mind it can change me it's my bailout from a bad background it's my bailout from a life of suffering it's my bailout from a life of carnality expose unto me hallelujah are you following me now are we together there is an area in your life where you have not tapped into the understanding of the laws of the kingdom it may be in the area of excellence you have not gotten a revelation that personal excellence is a language in the school of success you may not know you are a sincere person are we together so you don't pay attention to being excellent whether your shoe is polished or not you don't care all you know is god be glorified whether your shirt is ironed or not you don't care are we together now yes you don't pay attention to those details because you think they are carnal then the word of god begins to come and says in addition to your spiritual alignment begin to learn these principles then you learn them you start applying it to your business are we together whereas before customers will come and stand outside yes who is there 
and he, ah, I came to buy milk. How much? You don't know how much you are losing because of that wrong mindset. All of a sudden, you take the spirit of excellence to your business. You are a prayer warrior, but something is changing in your mind. And because you are receptive, you now arrange tables. Employ one person as a receptionist. When customers come, you now greet them. Hello, you are welcome. And they are surprised. Ah, ah bros, you don't change. They are trying to bring you back to yesterday. And you forbid it. I've been excellent. Please, you can sit down, sir. How may we help you? Ah, and the person squares up and says, I'm, I'm impressed. Where is your manager? Oh, he's busy, but I'll get to him. Um, if there's anything I can do to make your life comfortable, please, I will. The person calls his friend and says, Bros, you want to travel to Lagos, whereas, I mean, there's somebody who is here and willing to help you. That business connection, come. Are we together? Excellence. You have taken it to your business. All of a sudden, a sudden you've taken it to your academics. Your notebooks are no longer in your pocket. You don't fold them like a thief and put it in your pocket. The spirit of excellence is influencing your life. All of a sudden, you realize I'm 26. I'm no longer a child. I need to start behaving well. All this dressing, wearing a shirt as if one, one torn shirt, no singlet inside. You've never considered buying singlet. You sag your trouser. The belt has caught. You, all kinds of things have happened. You just move around and you suddenly sit down and say, ah, God bless me with 10,000. Let me buy at least two nice shirts. One nice trouser. I found out that I am 27. I don't have a suit. But I've bought food for 10 ladies and none of them like me. Let me go and get suit. The spirit of excellence is changing you. You no longer find yourself among those who are gossiping and gisting. They just come around. You start speaking. Not like where you are. Or like where God is taking you to. Are we together? Somebody comes, have you heard? He says, not necessary, please. I, my time is allocated. I say, ah, ah, which one is all this time, time thing? He says, no, no, no. I realize that there is a graph in this life. I have come out of my morning phase and I'm not yet prepared. So I'm catching up. I really appreciate if you don't become a distraction to me right now. All of a sudden, let me tell you what will happen. Heavy persecution, which is a sign that you are doing something right. Because your status quo... The people in your environment are now uncomfortable with you. They will interpret your transformation as pride. But give them time. They will go and give you chance for the real ones to come. You are switching realms. Are we together? All of a sudden, you used to be lazy and carnal. When we are in Rome, behave like Romans. Do. When we are broke, we call any military officer. But the word of God is coming. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Are we together? Yeah. Now it becomes a conviction. And your friends say, Kai, are we not traveling to Abuja this weekend? And say, no, it's over. I'm over with this life. I made up my mind that I want to be a woman of virtue and excellence. And they say, I bet you after everybody has slept with you. And then you tell them, the Bible says, remember not the former things. Nor consider the things of old. I may have lived in ignorance, but now that I know, I'm determined. Then he calls you and you pick your call and say sir i appreciate you but something has been happening in my life recently don't say i won't come like before no explain why you will never go again so that he will know that you are not confused it's a decision i've made your life is changing you used to be arrogant and and very rude to elderly people but then you are learning right now that there is something called the law of honor all of a sudden you step down and you see your mother and you greet. She's carrying something. I say, Mama, let me help you. Say, ah, I thought you were a pastor. You say, No, that's why I'm carrying this. Because I'm a pastor. You say, I thought pastors are big men. You say, No, I have learned that leaders are servants, not bosses. You lead by servanthood. Something is changing. If this is not happening to you, you are wasting your time in Koinonia. What can you see in your life? Has the spirit of excellence come upon you? Have you started washing the plates as soon as you finish eating? Or it's still there one week like before? There's no excellence. Are we together now? Yes. 
have you started paying attention to details help me sir do you have a good notebook where you can document your persuasion or you still have pieces of papers you move around and chuck in your pocket when you go to churches do you sit down and listen to the man of god with your heart open disregarding the imperfections and looking for jesus in that church or do you still go and you say this man of god is not like my church this guy cannot even speak english very well our apostle used to wear suit what is this guy wearing like this so you don't listen have you dropped that attitude of cynicism where it's no longer my church or koinonia but kingdom if this is not happening to you you are not changing has your prayer life improved by revelation not by guilt not by guilt where joshua selman preached and said if you are not praying three hours you are not a christian i just say ah god no, let's do it you put alarm clock and you can't wait the moment it does bam you say go oh god that's all I'm, I'm done no but by revelation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray because by revelation you have been given insight of what your prayer life does so on tuesday while you are lazy you would still come to the prayer department four o'clock you are on your way to rema why because i must build my spirit is it comfortable no it's not about comfort every man who strives for mastery must strive lawfully lawfully according to the rules my spiritual development requires fasting do i want to fast no but i do it out of love for christ and the discipline that will build me you are growing whereas you would have been the one before who will argue with anybody people are persecuting you and you are trying to explain no it's not like that it's really did i shout at you am i not a nice person now you have learned that only those behind you backbite those in front cannot backbite because they are focusing and moving forward and so you use those criticisms as stepping stones not stumbling blocks you have grown your self-worth has been so stable with the word of god you may not have all the money in your pocket but nobody can preach you into thinking inferior and it's not about saying i'm not this there is a settled confidence i am wonderfully and fearfully made are we together different dimensions of the kingdom all of a sudden you start committing yourself to tithe you start your tithing and the first one month is as if you are going to die you are hungry you are looking at that envelope you can eat it and nobody will know and ask god for forgiveness after after squandering the tithe but you tell yourself i'm no longer going to be a child i must grow and you are moving you are not seeing results but you know that as surely when a farmer plants he must reap you know it will come my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my secret place is calling you oh god my heart is calling you Hallelujah. whereas you a man of god your concept of ministry is to brag around looking for titles are we together hopping from one church to another hopping from the house of one rich member to the other bringing all kinds of prophecy are we together now arranging all kinds of people buy suit for me buy shoe for me my birthday is coming next year buy shoe for me all of a sudden you hear the word that ministry is not done that way ministry is about service with thorough integrity the willingness to be word compliant at any cost all of a sudden you find out wow whereas i'm doing ministry today and then occasionally i can go and watch pornography although i'm doing ministry occasionally i can go and drink i can watch this and you are finding out look it's time for me to be a true man of god it's time for me to be genuine it's time for me to be true are we together now and you go on a retreat 
I'm attacking the spirit of pornography. I'm attacking the spirit of masturbation. I'm attacking the spirit of immorality and drunkenness. These are things that nobody may know yet. But it's still at work. And God is giving you opportunity. And you go before his presence. Kabarakata. I'm going far. God, this thing must die. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Sing it just one more time. We wait on you. are we together so there is a mindset you have as a lady you come before God but there is a mindset you have you are born again but there is a mindset of desperation I can do anything for a man I can do anything for a rich man then all of a sudden you start receiving the word that there ought to be only one person who your life and allegiance should be pledged to Jesus Christ the son of God and now that revelation is meeting your wrong mindset are we together now oh I thought it was right to have 10 boyfriends 20 girlfriends and then be receiving money from this one when this one is broke this one is just receiving breakthrough I can alternate but now I'm learning do not be deceived God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man so well that he shall reap and you tell yourself it comes to an end i'm ready to settle down is god speaking to us that's the word working in you it's changing it may not be comfortable but all of a sudden you are learning your mother taught you not to listen to any man any man that talks give it back to him that's my daughter that's what they taught you and all of a sudden joshua selman attacks that rubbish and tells you no a meek and a temperate spirit is a woman's original design anything outside that produces a beast wives submit yourselves are we together and then the brothers come with their own mindset to i am the boss and then i teach them husbands love your wives not the way culture taught you as christ loved the church there is a standard it's not given to your personal opinion Your life is changing all of a sudden you turn and your world is changing like day and night you go back and do ministry with integrity no lying no prophesying to anybody and say drop ten thousand naira and i speak a prophecy no all of a sudden it may be popular but you change completely you don't criticize people you don't argue and tear down any man's ministry but you preserve truth as far as your work is concerned Lord, if it means me living in hunger and teaching your truth, I will walk in that integrity. Hallelujah. Whereas you're a man of God who will never pray and prepare your sermons. You just get up and do anything you want to do. All of a sudden, you learn that a minister, ministry is trust from God, supervised by God. All your prayer life is just about give me tea, give me bread. All of a sudden, you take on a a template of a man who has true compassion for his members lord bless your people open doors for them and god is watching you are you are keeping your own needs aside and you are praying lord there are barren women in my church give them children not for my name's sake for your name's sake lord that lady there are three ladies in my in my ministry that have hiv that have cancer that have fibroid they are going to die i intercede for them lord i found out that in one week i counseled 18 brothers suffering from masturbation i attacked that spirit that's how to pray that's the heart of a true shepherd they may not see you when you are doing this but let me tell you you see ba this thing we do you can't fake it for too long if you are not doing these things 
in reality in reality a day will come it will become clear because you will be tired no human being can pretend forever are we together Hogenedo do 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 Hogenedo Hogenedo Tirido do do Tirido Hogenedo One more time. Again, I do. Hallelujah. Is your life changing? Are you becoming relevant to society? Those you are living around, can they look at your life and say, Kai? All of a sudden, promise is a blessing to everybody in this area. Or are you still the same nuisance that people have been having? It must change. Say it must change. I've watched people and I've seen by the grace of God how God has transited their lives. My own life, I look at my life and I wonder and I'm grateful to God for the passion i have i have i have such a hunger for transformation i have no loyalty for error the moment i find out that there is something in my life that is impeding my growth i wave it goodbye forever no matter how long i've been with it i am malleable to change i'm not too arrogant to change i'm not too arrogant to tell god i'm sorry i'm not too arrogant to tell god i can be better is God already speaking to us tonight? Because I want you to change. This is what needs to change. This is what needs to change. Your mindset. I'll get to the teaching shortly. But this is, I'm preparing the ground. This is what I'm supposed to talk about. It, 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 that's where it's all leading to. Really. My message tonight is on Repentance. And it's not your idea of repentance that was the one message jesus brought repent 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 hallelujah matthew chapter 6 please verse 10. See, listen, Koinonia, hear me. You will thank me for these things you are receiving today. Believe me. When five years from now, ten years from now, you turn back and look at your children and you look at the sufferings and the ignorance of men and the result of their ignorance, you will just get down on your knees. Your remaining lifetime will be spent in tears of gratitude. Lord, how did I escape? He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The darkness will come upon the earth. You can't pray it away. But there is a key that exempts you. And this is it. 6 verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Jesus was teaching them how to pray. And he says, thy kingdom come. Three words that have governed my life thy kingdom come and it tells us how to bring the kingdom it says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven hallelujah now please listen it's very important for you to get this foundation the word kingdom is actually a combination of two words the king's domain the king's domain the king's domain the word kingdom means the domain of a king a kingdom is a sphere of influence 
a territory where the influence and the culture of a king is permitted to find expression without restraint that's a kingdom any sphere any territory where the influence and the culture of a king is permitted to find expression without restraint it's called a kingdom the domain of a king please listen i'll just connect what i've said so far with the teaching tonight and then we'll pray because i want us to be kingdom people there are many gospels that we preach and there are many gospels seven of them the bible teaches but the gospel jesus brought to the church is the gospel of the kingdom a revelation of the influence of christ the king upon a territory and jesus is teaching them how to connect to the heart of the father he says when you pray let it be that your desire should be lord your kingdom your influence the same way it is in heaven you know why heaven is the way it is because the kingdom of god the kingdom has been established the rule the reign the culture the way of life the modus operandi of god heaven is governed only by his ideas no suggestion no addition no improvement the wisdom of god is the map the compass that governs the activities in heaven are we together now so heaven is the way it is the arrangement of the 20 and 4 elders the streets of gold right there are 12 things the bible reveals to us about heaven one of them is the appearance of the throne room are we together now the 20 and 4 elders the angels the seven lampstands christ being in the midst of the lampstand the voices in heaven all kinds of arrangements the center of heaven is the throne room that's where life emanates that's where the rod of his justice that's where the rod of leadership proceeds from no rebellion the angels that rebelled were casted down to the earth perfect justice yet perfect love and so when you watch the inhabitants in heaven they don't guess how to live there is order the 20 and 4 elders know when to bow one doesn't just say kai i'm tired of waiting i remove my crown after all all of us will remove our crown there is excellence are we together the atmosphere of heaven is unrestrained there is no loyalty to two people no possibility of rebellion christ the center of heaven so there's no lack why because the ideas of god who is the fountain of wisdom is what permeates that environment are we together there is no hate they don't do capitalism they don't do democracy all your Karl Marx kinds of leadership and governance they don't do it there's nothing called the masses in heaven are we together there's no such thing as that no political parties no lack no ownership in heaven only access ownership is a sign of rebellion in heaven nobody owns anything the citizens of heaven only have access are we together now jesus is saying if you want your life to look like heaven listen he says pray lord your influence let it come to my life let it come to this system transfer everything that makes heaven heaven to find expression here and this is the secret he says his influence will find expression when his will everybody say will change that word will to idea change that word will to word his word change that word will to convictions change that word will to ideologies when your ideologies are executed in the earth your influence will come when my life permits your ideas then your kingdom can find expression in my life 
Is God speaking to us tonight? So, the level to which I achieve personal excellence in every area of my life is the degree to which I relinquish my idea about life and I embrace that of heaven. It is foolish for me to come from my culture. Right? I come from a culture of warriors. And warriors are arrogant people because they are always fighting animals and fighting enemies. Are we together now? Many of us come from different cultures. Now we come to God and God is saying, I want my kingdom to come into your life. This lack, this pain, your marriage is not working because all of you are bringing cultural ideas. I'm from Aquaibron. He's from Lagos. Lagos and Aquaibron is clashing. What is he producing? Disaster. And God is saying, both of you, leave it, embrace my ideas. Are we together now? Now, it's difficult because we hold on to the things we've known. It defines our sense of relevance. But God is saying, if you let it go, make my will be done. My ideas, my concepts. Then you will find out that your life will change. It no longer will be an issue of Igbo or Hausa or Yoruba or South South right or middle belt no another culture has superimposed the limitation of your culture your state of origin notwithstanding so we can come from different regions but the operation of the kingdom within us is the same because we have relinquished our culture and embraced the culture of the kingdom please listen this is very important when we talk about the word of God that's what was translated there will it's from the same Greek word. The root word is logos. And logos means the thoughts of a man. The thoughts, what a man is thinking. His ideas that cries out for execution. So when you call Jesus the living word, you're actually calling him the living logos. Means that the, he is the manifestation of the thoughts of the father. Whatever the father was thinking, Jesus was executing. Are we together? That was what made him a perfect son. So now he tells you, embrace my ideas about finances. Embrace my idea about the anointing. You don't get the anointing by going to a stream and going to go and bath. We're watching a program in the afternoon how that a man went to the stream to look for money and he was walking on water physically and then a spirit came out of the river and gave him a ring that he wore for money those are stupid ideas perverted ideas but there is a way there is a way that god can give a man are we together when you come into christ when you come into the kingdom the assignment for you is in one word and it's called repent repentance repentance is the journey that makes men like christ repentance has nothing to do necessarily with sin like i'm a i'm a sinner the word repent is a word that is a process it's not just an act that happens in one minute repentance is a journey repentance is a process matthew chapter 4 verse 17 john began to herald that message and when jesus came matthew 4 verse 17 he says from that time on please read jesus began to preach what was his message what was his message repent why should you repent for the influence of heaven is within your reach right now change i have come with the keys to give you the word at hand means is within your grasp you have been praying and say lord bring your ideas to us now i have come as a representation of the government you so desire now repent because the kingdom it wasn't just an issue of heaven or hell repent for the kingdom of heaven the influence of the father the life that makes heaven heaven is embodied in a person and he has come to you 
so the first step to repentance is accepting the ministry of the one who is proposing it that's jesus but that's not the last step it is only the first step the first step to repentance is an acknowledgement that you are lost outside of him and outside of his ways the bible says we all like sheep right we all like sheep have gone astray he said every one of us have gone his own ways like a sheep without a shepherd wasting my life away with all kinds of ideas now he comes to me and he says joshua selman repent so i come to him the first step lord jesus i relinquish ownership over my life i have tried and i've done everything i know to do i've lived my life with my own ideas but i hand over my life to you right from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus so i answer what you call an altar call and a man of god guides me through a prayer of faith right and i accept his substitutionary sacrifice and let me tell you what happens to many of us after service you just look pious and you carry your bible and then you don't know what else no that is the beginning of the journey to true transformation repentance is the key to transformation you don't repent by saying i repent you repent by embracing new ideas that's the true character of repentance repentance means i have seen another light i have seen another paradigm i've seen another path that is greater than what my father taught me greater than what my mother taught me greater than what abu taught me greater than what nigeria taught me greater than what africa taught me and i am willing to follow the language of repentance is follow me follow me and i will make you so alpha follow me carry your ministry along carry your wife along carry your son along i will make you don't come made you you cannot be made i will make you the mission is trust me enough even when you don't understand what i'm doing believe that my thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil right I will go, I will go, wherever you lead me, I will go, yes Lord, I will go, I will go, wherever you lead me, so, he leads you through a path that you have never followed before and he says everybody follows this road but this is where i'm taking you to you you've never passed it before but you trust him you trust him lord i have never sown a seed before in my life but now you are teaching me this is the key to prosperity i trust you I've lived my entire life in fornication. I don't know how to not live in fornication. But I repent. I embrace a new idea. Now see. The way God works. All you need to do is receive. The grace for performance comes from him. You do not have the power. This is the true picture of grace. The ability that backs your decision. The decision is a product of your willpower but the grace to live in that decision is what is supplied after the decision is made so i don't have any power in myself but i decide i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing choose don't worry about how you will go just choose so you choose lord i choose your way satan hears you causes hear you the backgrounds the foundations of your father's house hear you and god says now that you have chosen the spirit of grace 
is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. You're the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age to Come, changing everything. and sisters you just made a decision Kabalakata. all of a sudden an ability you never had suddenly comes on you how shall these things be seeing that i do not know a man he said the power of the highest you can't stop fornication by yourself you can't stop drinking by yourself yours is to choose i align with you and grace comes upon you all of a sudden power strength capacity you watch the things that once swallowed you and you can nod at it and go back to sleep because you chose we never choose because we say i don't have the power to make it happen god says choose prosperity you say but god i graduated with that class that's not your business just choose 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 and the grace comes and that grace appears unto men and can teach men it can teach men it can teach men how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way it's a part only the holy ghost knows how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly like eagles when you don't know the wind power and work in you changing everything that's what god is doing tonight swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit that's what he's doing for you don't you know in his arms are the keys to eternal life like he's teaching you a little here a little there soon your day will dawn is at work in you changing everything hallelujah line upon line precept upon precept you are changing it will not happen in one day the accuser of the brethren will come to you and raise his ugly head to tell you if if the hand of god is upon your life why are you not moving as fast as you should move right and then you keep moving like a seed that is planted you begin to grow and blossom and your life becomes a marvel and a wonder repentance please hear me is the key repentance is the pathway that leads you to transformation the moment you get born again your next assignment is the journey of transformation and it's only done when the word of god is accurately divided the word does not change people the word explained received and understood is what changes people don't you think that you are hearing the word it changes you know when the word of god is explained like i'm teaching now and you are saying wow i never saw it this way i thought it was just about heaven and hell i thought it was just about being a christian i didn't know that that's only the beginning to the journey i now see why i should come for koinonia every week it's a progression of the training are we together now yes it's a progression of the training every time they go from strength to strength they go from strength to strength as many as appear before god in zion they grow from strength to strength he says thou will show us the path of life for in thy light we see light so he exposes you while you are working well now your prayer life is at work now you are praying in tongues right now you are studying the word of god but you find out that there are all kinds of devilish things tying you down you thought they were not there but you are seeing patterns in your life that represent covenants of darkness 
then another teaching comes teaching you the mystery of true genuine deliverance that can cut you away from your past the same way the red sea divided egypt and israel forever they came out of egypt but egypt could still catch up with them but something happened an encounter that had to do with water and that was the end of it he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever are we together whereas you thought that all there is to life is just to work hard now you are finding out that there is a place for intelligent work there is a place for the favor of god and there is a place for prophecy believe in the lord your god and you shall be established nobody has ever really truly spoken over your life and what you are doing and you say this is the missing link i have studied the books i am a tiger but there is no prophetic word and you get that word and it changes your life brothers and sisters i wish god will open my heart so that you will see how much i crave that every one of us will step into perfection step into this realm of absolute maturity in the spirit a realm where the encumbrances of life have no power over you thank you see let me tell you something i have lost the ability to be discouraged honestly I know you think it's pride if i tell you i'm discouraged if i tell you i'm frustrated will i be true to you will i be sincere to you from my heart to tell you i'm discouraged because i found a stream of endless supply of grace <laughs> i found my way I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and rejoicing to my soul. It's not just saying I can cram scripture. Psalm chapter 1 verse 2. Psalm chapter 3 verse 4. Blah, 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 and then they are clapping. Whoa, whoa, that's not the word. That's memory verse. Thy word have I hidden. Like an endangered species. It has framed my conviction. I cannot think any other way. I don't think like a Nigerian. I don't think like a northerner. I think like a citizen of the kingdom because I truly am. I'm not pretending it. It's the truth. There are some things that are no longer realities for me. And my job is to take away those things, those illusions out of your mind. I can't think failure. I can't. It's not all this confession. Ah, I can't think. I'm, I, I mean it seriously. I mean it. Where will all the revelations of the mysteries of the kingdom run to when I'm thinking failure? How will it happen? Don't say, ah, you are lucky, God. No, 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 no. Take everything I have today. Give me time. It will come back. I found the key. I found the key. They know not, neither will they understand. He said they grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course. It is not about the government. It is not about Satan. It is not about witches and wizards. It is about disalignment. It is about rebellion. It is about pride and lack of meekness. It is about inconsistency. Hallelujah. I challenge you in this place. There is a realm, a path which no fowl has seen. Job said, the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. By the grace of God and all honor to the glory of God. This great ministry God is building with his own hands. is being built by wisdom. It's not built by luck. It's not built by guess. Did you know while I was seated here and the worship team were ministering. Some of you would have noticed I was in an open vision almost all through the worship time. And I was seeing the tent. That's the next level of the ministry. I was seeing the tent. I was seeing everything. And I was watching some of the same people. Some I didn't see them. Some were there still doing worship. The sound, everything. And I was just in that atmosphere. It's not like I was watching. I was there. 
so how can i now get up and lie to you that i'm discouraged that's what i'm trying to tell you it will be a lie you see what do you know that gives you confidence yay though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil why for thou art with me then he says thy rod and thy staff they comfort me they comfort me koinonia i bring you a word tonight your project of transformation must be taken seriously the same way you put a building project you must transform there is almost no koinonia message that is not in my system as those who are close to me i listen to it all the time my phone is full of messages i'm listening i don't trust my mistakes i don't trust my errors i have god has helped me but i'm still a long way to go compared to where i'm coming from and compared to where he's taking me thank god but compared to where Christ is taking me and taking this ministry, we are only one step out of the cave. So while on one side, I can pat my shoulders and say, well done, transformation continues. I don't have time for distraction. I don't listen to nonsense. Not rubbish gist, not rubbish movies, not rubbish shows. I don't have that time. There is an urgency. There is a generation depending upon my stability in the spirit. Are you ready to give yourself that kind of urgency? hallelujah transformation tomorrow we are traveling we are in Joss again for a meeting all through from there to Mina we are traveling everywhere all of those people are waiting to receive am I just going to keep giving them what I gave them last year two years ago or am I going to come with something fresh from the throne you don't receive from God the way you enter a fast food no you must pay attention allow his word change you if you study your bible just for preaching you will not be an epistle of your message it will be clear with time that your message has not become a persuasion god is my witness i believe this i will die believing it it is the principle upon which i run my life it is it has nothing to do with me being spiritual my entire life runs on this I don't argue with it it is the template for my life I'm not just a Christian because I'm going to heaven I'm not just a Christian because I have ministry responsibilities this word is a lamp to my feet I use it like a torchlight taking myself out of darkness bringing myself to the way of light that's what has brought the anointing that's why I respect the Holy Spirit so much you hear me talk a lot about him i'm not copying men of god i'm not copying benny him okay Phil Kuhlman. he has revealed himself to me he is the fountain of wisdom he will give you wisdom that is bigger than your age he will give you wisdom that is bigger than your background i tell you your weaknesses are swallowed up in his presence every limitation becomes uh irrelevant when you stand with his wisdom now you see the trouble is you may not manifest what is showing you all at once so chances are that people will not take you seriously but give him time give him time give my god time give my god time i know this god there is no one like this god believe me i know what i'm saying there is no one like my God. I love your ways and I love your word. There is no one like my God. There is no one like my God. There is. I tell you sometimes i feel like busting tearing myself into pieces do you know why because i have seen god's system of justice my background 
may not be fair my parents may not have been fair on me are we together situations and circumstances may not be fair but the word of god is a neutralizer it vetoes everything and it balances your life I pray that you will believe what I'm saying I pray that you will have this passion and change your life and laugh at your mountains not pray about them laugh at them they are a mirage while we look at the things I'm telling you every mountain in your life trust me koinonia I know what I'm saying is a mirage it's a mirage it's a mirage when David stood before Goliath he said who is this uncircumcised not who is this mighty man he never called goliath a mighty man he said who is this uncircumcised philistine he said god who delivered me from the lion and the bear this day not tomorrow will give me your head he said i will throw you down i will use your own sword and i will give your head to the birds there is something you can see in the secret place see let me tell you something when you grow in confidence of the word there are some things you no longer will pray about believe me because sometimes your prayer is just a succor to manage your fears it becomes unnecessary you just lie down and sleep the boat was about capsizing jesus was sleeping how could he die the resurrection and the life how could he die there was no possibility of death in him the disciples could die when he got up he looked at the storm and he said shalom be still koinonia i want your life to bear fruit please hear me i want your life to bear fruit many have walked this path they made mistakes they never got there but I'm glad to tell you there are some people who walked and went there. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Listen we are few but not many we are surrounded by many who have crossed that river you are not the first to cross the river from lack to prosperity you are not the first to be mightily used by God the Bible is full of ordinary men they have crossed that river and they left their footprints he said ask for the ancient parts don't guess millionaires have come and gone there are billionaires that lost money and became beggars and rose back to become billionaires they left their footprints there are men of god who have lost members and came back to that status there are men who have lost anointings and come back there is nothing you want that somebody has not done before though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before one more time though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river listen the many may not come from your family in your family nobody has crossed that river but there are still those who have crossed it are you hearing what i'm saying anybody that tells you god cannot use a young man Though we are few, you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song you'll be singing for when you overcome. Holy is the Lord. When all the pain is over, holy is when you finally break through to that place of destiny they may mock you now but continue with the word of god they may not understand but i'm telling you you will have the last laugh trust me
years ago i was lying down on a mattress on the ground and i said lord i want to affect my generation i want to change lives i don't want to live like the people i've seen in my family and my background i want to be different and the lord told me something it was a secret he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you i have followed him closely and today in a measure i have seen his faithfulness he doesn't lie we are just too impatient to wait for his word to come to pass believe me brothers and sisters there are those who god has given marital breakthrough you are not the first there are people who have gotten access to the mysteries of the kingdom don't act like you are the first it has happened before william seymour alexander the way catherine kuhlman mv mcpherson they are they are the clouds of witness great men in nigeria babalola archbishop benson idahosa there are so many there are fathers of faith who are alive brothers and sisters believe me they crossed that river some of them went through all kinds of obstacles and they crossed it he will bless you just pay attention if you do this i'm telling you your life will change like night and day only praise can take you higher to the place where you can see the father face to face oh my life will never be small see one more time hey, only praise can take me higher There are very successful people in this place listen you may see everybody here most people here are young people make no mistakes there are millionaires in this place not by prophecy i mean people now here and now not it will happen no there are people who are very anointed but we all bring ourselves here and humble ourselves to listen to the word you know why because god is changing people there are people seated inside outside doctors professors intelligent people but they have come your life will never be the same so when someone looks at you and says you are not growing spiritually don't even pray about it just leave the person time is a revealer time is a revealer time is a revealer some of you would not have believed what i'm telling you now if i told you 10 years ago 10 years to come i'll still be saying what i'm saying but it will come with more results now and you will listen the bible says arise shine for your light is come he told us this is our year of multiplied grace and influence it's not a cliche ah when i say get up get up when i say move when i say act when i say get up i'm not saying stand up i'm saying it's time to shake that dust and stand up arise and shine for your light is come shake mediocrity shake frustration shake yesterday and his pain and say no i saw in my visions that anointing i must step into that realm i saw myself my shadow lifting wheelchairs not headaches no i'm a city not a village on a hill i'm on my way rising i may not have all the evidences now but give me time arise he spoke unto me and the word picked me up and set me upon my feet when he says get up when he says move when he says run when he says fly hey only place can take me higher to the place where i can see 
the Father, help me, face to face. Turn to three or four people and prophesy to them. Tell them I'm a wonder about to manifest. I'm not motivating you, honestly speaking. Tell them I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. I may have a fault in my ground, but there is an anointing. 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 Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Listen. Please look up, everybody. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to reject the word of God. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to ignore teachings. Get a notebook. 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 Write. Have personal times of teaching, not just devotion. Every day with Jesus, five minutes. You are reciting the prayers you are running. You don't grow that way. Give God time and he will give you a life of victory. Give God time. He will give you a life that is enviable. Give God time. He will turn you into Beulah and Hefzibah. Give God time. He will make you a bank of the anointing. Prayer point number one. Lord, I give you time. I'm tired of giving you my remaining time when I waste my time doing other things. Please pray. Lift your voice, coin on you and pray. Lord, I give you time. I give you time. I give your word time. Pray. Lord, we give you time. We give you time in Koinonia. Time to make us. Time to break us. Time to mold us. Time to build us. Time to perfect us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to pray. You say, Lord, in any way I have been negligent and nonchalant about the ministry of strategic transformation i repent and i receive grace lift your voice and pray if friday is your only time of transformation you are not growing enough Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Let's establish it. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and then Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, please. We're establishing the last prayer point. Let's read it together. One, two, read is projected. And be not conformed to this. The word world is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this age. Read on. But be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mentality, your mentality, your perceptions. Then it says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and 
perfect will of God the renewing of your mind repentance the pathway that leads to transformation dropping old ideas to pick up the new that are consistent with heaven's way of doing things Philippians chapter 2 please from verse 5 let's read together one to read stop the word let is the word permit permit this mindset this mentality to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he had an understanding there was a way he interpreted life that made him victorious let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus let's look at Philippians chapter 4 please last verse Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 actually 7 to 9 but let's see let's just focus on 8 okay let's let's read from 7 down to 9 one to read and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus verse 8 finally Joshua Selman whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue moral excellence if there be any praise think 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 on these things not failure not defeat not i am a nobody not it's not for people like us no think on these things as a pastor think on pastoring a flourishing ministry let people tell you ah it's not about crowd no problem may god bless you with your revelation but for me god so loved the world he sent me not to go and pastor three or four people he sent me to influence a generation hallelujah the last prayer point father walk on my mentality something in my mind is keeping me poor something is keeping me not anointed something is keeping me out of revelation lift your voice something i do not know about excellence is responsible for mediocrity something i do not know about the anointing is responsible for lack of testimonies in my church something i do not know about leadership is frustrating me in my organization something i do not know about the economic system of the kingdom is keeping me poor change my mentality sisters pray something about my mentality is stopping my husband from coming to me lord change it something about my mentality is stopping my wife from coming to me something about my mentality is stopping good friends destiny help us from coming into my life show me oh god and change it hallelujah please say this after me as loud as you can say in the name of Jesus I declare that I am not a rebel to the ways of God I declare that I'm not rebellious to the teachings of the kingdom I declare that my background my past my culture my failures will not affect God's dream for my life God's plan for my life God's expectation for me in spite of my past I am still anointed in spite of my limitation God's grace is upon my life I declare that I'm not inferior I'm not second class the wisdom of God the favor of God the 
anointing of the Holy Ghost is at work in me my life is a testimony of the power of God I declare that I do not resent excellence I embrace it I honor those who execute it I honor those who teach it I declare that my life becomes excellent by choice I declare that I will not resent the anointing I will not resent the supernatural I will not criticize those working in it I embrace their ministry I honor them and I receive of that grace say in the name of Jesus I do not criticize wealthy people I do not have a resentment for wealth and prosperity I believe it and I honor those who have it and I declare that it must show up in my life say in the name of Jesus I honor those with the spirit of revelation I receive of their ministry I do not criticize them and that grace comes upon me say in the name of Jesus my life is supernatural my results are exponential say in the name of Jesus my words carry power my words carry grace the fragrance of favor is upon me say it again the fragrance of favor is upon me everywhere I speak it has an effect in the ears of the listeners my life is a plus to everyone around me my life is an advantage to my territory I declare over my past over my background I'm done with you never to return to you I set my face forward following the Holy Ghost and being obedient to the word my destiny is calling and I must get here lift your voice and turn it into a prayer my destiny is calling I must get there. My destiny is calling. My destiny is calling. No room for the past. No room for old ideas. I choose to change. I choose to change. Hallelujah. One more confession. Say in the name of Jesus. I choose a balanced spiritual life say it again in the name of Jesus I choose a balanced spiritual life where I excel in all things spiritually in the supernatural in my finances in my family intellectually you see you must be balanced standing on one side doing well financially with a terrible prayer life is an imbalance being anointed and being broke is an imbalance being a Christian and not rising to a position of influence is an imbalance desire influence is not a cause is how the ideas of the kingdom are enforced in a territory the key to kingdom advancement is influence where you gain a platform where you can compel men to buy into your thinking it's called influence say in the name of Jesus I increase in every area spiritually financially mentally in my body in relationships
relationships I declare that I have supernatural influence this year and in this season I am a leader everywhere I go an uncommon leader I set the pace I don't join the crowd I don't follow the crowd I don't do as they do I don't say as they say I set the pace in the name of Jesus Christ I sincerely pray for you from the depth of my heart the grace that has made men uncommon that has distinguished men in their territories the grace that has given men keys of supernatural indomitable influence firm grabs on territories there is a grace that can give a man firm grasp of a territory may that grace come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ the grace for territorial influence the capacity to be a voice over a territory regardless of criticisms regardless of limitations there is such a grace may it come upon you I speak it upon you the best setter grace the groundbreaker grace the new horizon grace the grace that obstructs status quo may that grace come upon you the courage to be different the courage to be different the grace to lead to set the pace let it come upon you the fear of being different the fear of being controversial I take it out of your life forever the spirit of dishonor and resentment to people who have results the spirit of cynicism and castigation of what you may secretly admire but publicly castigate I command that spirit to live your life forever father I pray for koinonia this is why you anointed us you are raising men of tremendous influence and I pray in the name of Jesus that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and through tonight's service someone's life will become dramatically influential go and possess the gates of your enemies you will suck from kings in the name of Jesus Christ you will accomplish feats that you have never done that language called impossible is eroded from your life forever hallelujah please everybody standing inside and outside please help those under the anointing if there are. there's someone shouting outside there listen there are people here right now you've heard me preach and while i was preaching the holy ghost was speaking to you and he was saying look son daughter end this war in your life tonight we've spoken about repentance you cannot be in a kingdom and reject a king you are called a rebel but the lord brought you here all the thousands listening to me online and all our media platforms and those inside here outside in any of the overflows i want to lead you to jesus christ right now there is such profound anointing in this place you may not understand what is happening to you right now i see so many angels outside that's what i'm seeing lights 
there are people here tonight you've heard this teaching and it's time to run to God wherever you are please don't waste our time Jesus has spoken to you you may have come from a background where no one believed in you but tonight he calls you there are those who have given your life to Christ but then the truth is you found yourself derailing seriously and right now you don't even know the name of what you are doing but he's calling you in the next two minutes these two categories of people come to Jesus I'm waiting for you to pray for you wherever you are all to you all to you God bless you keep coming I give it all to you there must come a time in the life of a man when you will make that decision all to you all to you I give it all to you I give it all keep coming one more minute there are so many outside keep coming all to you all to you I give it all look at me brothers and sisters every champion starts as a volunteer no champion starts as a champion you volunteer yourself to be taught to be coached to be built I'm leading you in a prayer of salvation but this should not be your last meeting and it has nothing to do with just coming to listen to Joshua Selman the Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned until he strives lawfully they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing lift your right hands all of you I know you have come to Jesus because you love him rebels run away from him you have come to him so you are not a rebel say after me from the depth of your heart you're speaking to him because he's here say Jesus you're the son of God and I believe in you I surrender my life my hopes my dreams my plans to your hands I declare that the management of my life is handed over to you you are my lord you are my king you are my savior give me a new beginning wash my sins and make me an ambassador in your kingdom the grace for a new beginning is upon me today oh say it one more time to the shame of your past the grace for a new beginning is upon me keep your hands lifted father thank you for a new beginning let their past never follow them again your past will never relieve itself in your future you may have made mistakes you may have fallen in all kinds of ways but his grace comes to you tonight like a man delivers a bird from the snare of the fowler you have been delivered from a life of captivity and misery in the name of Jesus the grace that keeps men in this kingdom is released upon you you are open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen look at me I love you thank you for this great decision I want you to follow the lady waving her hands and um, they'll have your details and then we'll communicate to you again Thank you so much for this sacrifice. The Lord bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Please follow the lady waving her hands. All of you in concert, just move this way very quickly. Let's celebrate them, Koinonia. It's a new beginning for them.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.